ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय विल कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट ऑफ डिवोशन बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति विदान स्वामी प्रभुपाद व्हिच इज ओरिजिनली भक्ति विसामृत सिंधु बाशी रूप गोस्वामी मुखम करोति वाचलम पंगुम लंघते गिरिम यत् कृपातम हम वंदे श्री गुरुम दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्येश्वरम हरिओम तत्सर चैप्टर 37 impetuses for krishna's service the causeless mercy of krishna the dust of his lotus feet his prasad and association with his devotees are some impetuses toward a devotee's engagement in transcendental loving service to the lord krishna exhibited his causeless mercy when he was present at the departure of grandfather bhishma during the battle of kurukshetra bhishma dev the grandfather of arjun was lying on a bed of arrows before departing from this mortal world When Lord Krishna Maharaj Yudhishthir and other Pandavas approached Bhishma Dev he was very grateful to Lord Krishna and he addressed the Brahmana military commander Kripacharya thus My dear Kripacharya just see the wonderful causeless mercy of Lord Krishna I am most unfortunate I have no qualification I was opposing Krishna's most intimate friend Arjun I even tried to kill him I have so many disqualifications and yet the Lord is still so kind that he has come to see me at the last point of my life he is worshipable by all great sages but still he is so merciful that he has come to see me and to see an abominable person like me sometimes the vibration of lord krishna's flute his bugling his smiling his footmarks on the ground the transcendental fragrance of his body and the appearance of a new cloud in the sky also become impetuses for ecstatic love of him In the Vidgad Madhav there is the following statement when Krishna was playing on his flute Baldev was anxious was very anxiously declaring just see how after hearing the transcendental sound of Krishna's flute Indra the king of heaven is crying in his heavenly kingdom and from his tear drops falling on the ground Vrindavan appears to have become a celestial residence for the demigods ecstatic love for Krishna which is known as anubhav is symptomized by the following signs one becomes engaged exclusively in the service of the lord being attentive to carry out the orders of the lord faithfully one becomes undisturbed and unenvious in full transcendental loving service to the lord and one makes friendship with the devotees of the lord who are situated in faithful service to him all these symptoms are called anubhav ecstatic love the first symptom of anubhav or engagement in a particular type of service is exemplified by daruk a servant of krishna who used to fan krishna with a charmer a bunch of hair when he was engaged in such service he was filled with ecstatic love and the symptoms of ecstatic love become became manifest in his body but daruk was so serious about his service that he checked all of these manifestations of ecstatic love and considered them hindrances to his engagement he did not care very much for this these manifestations although they automatically developed In Shrimad Bhagavatam 10th canto 86th chapter verse 38 there is a statement of how Shrutadev a Brahman from the country called Mithila in northern India became so overpowered with joy as soon as he saw Krishna that immediately after bowing to the lord's lotus feet he stood up and began to dance raising his two arms above his head one of the devotees of lord krishna once addressed him in this manner my dear lord although you are not a professional dancer by your dancing you have so astonished us that we can understand that you are personally the master of all dancing certainly you must have learned this dancing art directly from the goddess of love when a devotee dances in ecstatic love there are manifestations of symptoms which are called satvik satvik means that they are from the transcendental platform they are not symptoms of material emotion they come from the soul proper In Shrimad Bhagavatam 10th canto 85th chapter verse 38 Shukadev Goswami tells Maharaj Parikshit that after surrendering everything unto the lotus feet of Vaman Dev Bali Maharaj immediately caught hold of the lotus feet of the Lord and pressed them to his heart being overwhelmed with joy he manifested all the symptoms of ecstatic love with tears in his eyes and a faltering voice In such expressions of ecstatic love there are many other subsidiary symptoms such as jubilation withering silence disappointment moroseness reverence thoughtfulness remembrance doubtfulness confidence eagerness indifference 
restlessness, impudence, shyness, inertness, illusion, madness, ghastliness, contemplation, dreaming, disease and signs of death. When a person meets Krishna, there are symptoms of jubilation, pride and perseverance and when he is feeling great separation from Krishna, the symptoms of ghastliness, disease and signs of death become prom prominent. It is stated in first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th chapter, verse 5, that when Lord Krishna returned from the battlefield of Kurukshetra to his home at Dwarka, all the residents of Dwarka began to talk with him. As a child talks lovingly to his father after the father's return from foreign country, this is an example of jubilation. When Bahulashva, the king of Mithila, saw Krishna at his palace, he decided to offer his respects by bowing down before him at least a hundred times. But he was so overcome by feelings of love that after bowing down only once, he forgot his position and could not rise again. In the Skanda Puran, a devotee tells Lord Krishna, My dear Lord, as the sun evaporates all the water on the ground by its scorching heat, so my mental state has dried away the luster of my face and body due to separation from you. This is an example of withering in ecstatic love. An expression of disappointment was made by Indra, the king of heaven. When he saw the sun god, Indra told him, My dear sun god, your sunshine is very glorious because it reaches unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, the master of the Yadu dynasty. I have thousands of eyes, but they have proved to be useless. Because not even for a moment are they able to see the lotus feet of the Lord. Reverential devotion for the Lord gradually increases and transforms itself into ecstatic love. Then affection and the attachment. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 38 chapter verse 6, Akrur says, Because I am going to see Lord Krishna today, all symptoms of inauspiciousness have already been killed. My life is not successful, but because I shall be able to offer my respects unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Another devotee in ecstatic reverential affection once said, when will that glorious day in my life come when it will be possible for me to go to the bank of the Yamuna and see Lord Krishna playing there as a cowherd boy? When there is no diminishing of this ecstatic love and when it is freed from all kinds of doubt, the devotee has reached the stage called steady love for Krishna. In this stage, all expressions of unhappiness by the devotee are called anubhav or ecstatic loving symptoms. The symptom of ecstatic affection with reverence felt by Bali Maharaj was expressed as follows. My dear Lord, you have simultaneously punished me and showed me your causeless mercy. My conclusion is that when I have taken shelter of your lotus feet, I shall never be disturbed in any condition of life. Whether you give me the opportunity to enjoy all the yogic perfections or you put me into the most abominable condition of hellish life, I shall never be disturbed. Krishna himself, after seeing Bali Maharaj, told Uddhav, My dear friend, how can I express the glorious characteristics of Bali Maharaj? the son of Virochana. Although the king of the Suras, the demigod, was cursed by his son of Virochana, and although I cheated him in my incarnation as Vamana, taking away his dominions throughout the universe, and although I still criticized him for not fulfilling his promise, I have just now seen him in his kingdom, and he feelingly expressed his love for me. When such a feeling of love becomes intensified, it is called affection. In that affectional stage, one cannot bear separation from Krishna even for a moment. One devotee told Daruk, the servant of Krishna, My dear Daruk, when you become like food because of your separation from Krishna, it is not so wonderful. Whenever any devotee sees Krishna, his eyes become filled with water and in separation, any devotee like you would become stunned, standing like a wooden doll. That is not a very wonderful thing. There is a statement about Uddhav's symptoms of love. When he saw Lord Krishna, his eyes filled with tears and created a river which flowed down toward the sea of Krishna to offer tribute. As a wife offers tribute to husband, when his body erupted with goose pimples, he appeared like a kadamba flower. And when he began to offer prayers, he appeared completely distinct from all other devotees. 
When affection is sim symptomized by direct happiness and distress, it is called attraction. In such an attracted state of ecstatic love, one can face all kinds of disadvantages calmly. Even at the risk of death, such a devotee is never bereft of the transcendental loving service of the Lord. A glorious example of this ecstatic love was exhibited by King Parikshit when he was at the point of death, although he was bereft of his entire kingdom, which spread over all the world, and although he was accepting not even a drop of water in the seven days remaining to him, because he was engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from Shukadev Goswami, he was not in the least distressed. On the contrary, he was feeling direct transcendental ecstatic joy in association with Shukadev Goswami. One devotee has confidently expressed this opinion. If a drop of Lord Krishna's mercy can be bestowed upon me, then I shall feel completely carefree even in the midst of the fire or an ocean. But if I became, become bereft of his causeless mercy, then even if I become the king of Dwarka, I would be simply an object of pinpricks. Or pinpricks. Devotees such as Maharaj Parikshit and Uddham are all situated in ecstatic attraction on the basis of affection. And in that state of affection, a feeling of friendship becomes manifest. When Uddha was freed from all material contamination, he saw the Lord, and his throat became choked up and he could not speak. By the movements of his eyebrows alone, he was embracing the Lord. Such ecstatic love has been divided by great scholars into two groups, addition and subtraction. If a devotee is not directly associated with the Lord, it is called subtraction. In this state of love, one is constantly fixed with his mind at the lotus feet of the Lord. A devotee in this state becomes very eager to learn the transcendental qualities of the Lord. The most important business of such a devotee is attaining the association of the Lord. In the Nrsimha Puran, there is a statement about King Ikshvaku which illustrates this state of ecstatic love. Because of his great affection for Krishna, King Ikshvaku became greatly attached to the black cloud, the black deer, the deer's black eyes and the lotus flower, which is always compared to the eyes of the Lord. In the 10th canto, 38th chapter, verse 10 of the Bhagavatam, Akrura thinks, Since the Lord has now appeared to diminish the great burden of the world and is now visible to everyone's eyes in his personal transcendental body, when we see him before us, is that not the ultimate perfection of our eyes? In other words, Akrura realized that the perfection of the eyes is fulfilled when one is able to see Lord Krishna. Therefore, when Lord Krishna was visible on the earth by direct appearance, everyone who saw him surely attained perfection of sight. In the Krishna Karnamrita written by Bill Mangal Thakur, there is this expression of eagerness in ecstatic love. How miserable it is, my dear Krishna, O friend of hopeless, O merciful Lord, how can I pass these thankless days without seeing you? A similar sentiment was expressed by Uddhav when he wrote a letter to Krishna and said, My dear Supreme King of Raja, you are the vision of nectar for the eyes and without seeing your lotus feet and the effulgence of your body, my mind is always morose. I cannot perceive any peace under any circumstance. Beside this, I am feeling every moment separation to be like the duration of many, many long years. In the Krishna Karnamrita, it is also said, My dear Lord, you are the ocean of mercy. With my arms placed upon my head, I am bowing down before you with all humility and sincerity. I am praying unto you, my Lord. Would you be pleased just to sprinkle a little of the water of your glance upon me? That will be a great satisfaction. A devotee of Lord Krishna said, Even When even Shashi Shekhara, Lord Shiva, is unable to see you, what chance is there for me? Who am lower than an ordinary worm? I have only committed misdeeds. I know that I am not at all fit to offer my prayers to you, but because you are known as Deen Bandhu, the friend of the fallen, I humbly pray that you will kindly purify me by the beams of your transcendental glance. If I become thoroughly bathed by a merciful glance, then I may be saved. Therefore, my Lord, I am requesting you to please bestow upon me your merciful guidance. Chapter 38 Indifference and Separation the great devotee Uddha once wrote a letter to Krishna, My dear Krishna, I have just finished the study of all the kinds of philosophical books and the Vedic verses about the goals of life, and so now I have a little reputation for my studies. But still, in spite of my reputation, my knowledge is condemned, because although enjoying the effulgence of Vedic knowledge, I could not appreciate the effulgence 
emanating from the nails of your toes. Therefore, the sooner my pride and Vedic knowledge are finished, the better it will be. This is an example of indifference. Another devotee very anxiously expressed himself thus, My mind is very flickering, so I cannot concentrate it upon your lotus feet, and seeing this inefficiency in me, myself, I become ashamed, and the whole night I am unable to sleep because I am exasperated by my great inability. In the Krishna Karnamrita, Vilu Mangal Thakur has explained his restlessness as follows, My dear Lord, your naughtiness in boyhood is the most wonderful thing in the three worlds and you yourself know what this naughtiness is. As such, you can very easily understand my flickering mind. This is known to you and me. Therefore, I am simply yearning to know how I can fix my mind on your lotus feet. Another devotee expressed his impudence by saying, My dear Lord, without considering my lowly position, I must confess to you that my eyes are just like black wasps desiring to hover at your lotus feet. In the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth chapter, verse 37, the great sage Narada informs Maharaj Yudhishthira about Prahlad Maharaj, who was a devotee from the very beginning of his life. The proof of Prahlad's natural devotion is that even when he was a small child, he did not play with his playmates but was always eager to preach the glories of the Lord. Instead of joining in their sportive acrobatic feats, he remained an inactive child because he was always in trance, meditating on Krishna. As such, there was no possibility of him, his being touched by the external world. The following statement is about Brahmana devotee. The, this Brahmana is very expert in all kinds of activities, but I do not know why he is looking up without moving his eyes. It appears that his body is fixed, motionless, just like a doll's. I can guess that in this condition he has been captivated by the transcendental beauty of that expert flute player. Sri Krishna and being attached to him, he is simply staring at the black cloud, remembering the bodily you of Sri Krishna. This is an example of how a devotee can become inert due to ecstatic love. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th canto, 4th chapter, verse 40, Prahlad Maharaj says that even in his childhood, when he was loudly speaking the glories of the Lord, he used to dance just like a shameless madman, and sometimes being fully absorbed in thought on the past of the Lord, pastimes of the Lord, he used to imitate such pastimes. This is an instance of a devotee's being almost like a madman. Similarly, it is said the great sage Narad was so ecstatically in love with Krishna that he would sometimes dance naked, and sometimes his whole body would become stunned. Sometimes he would laugh very loudly, sometimes he would cry very loudly, sometimes he would remain silent and sometimes he would appear to be suffering from some disease. Although he had no disease, this is an, another instance of becoming like a madman in the ecstasy of devotion. In the Hari Bhakti Subodhya, it is stated that when Prahlad Maharaj was thinking himself unfit to approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he immersed himself in great distress in an ocean of unhappiness. As such, he used to shed tears and lie down on the floor as though unconscious. The students of a great devotee once talked among themselves in this way, My dear God brothers, our spiritual master, after seeing the lotus feet of the Lord, has thrown himself into the fire of lamentation. And because of this fire, the water of his fire, life has almost dried away. Let us now pour the nectar of the holy name through his ears, and by our doing so, the swan of his life may again show signs of life. When Lord Krishna went to the city of Shonitapura to fight with Bali's son Bana and to cut off all his hands, Uddhav being separated from Krishna and thinking of his fight was almost completely stunned into unconsciousness. When a devotee is fully in love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there may be the following symptoms due to his feelings of separation from the Lord a feverish condition of the body, withering of the body, lack of sleep, non-attachment, inertness, appearing diseased, madness, unconsciousness, and sometimes death. As far as the feverish condition of the body is concerned, Uddhav once told Narad, my dear great sage, the lotus flower that is a friend of the sun may be a cause of distress for us. The fire in the ocean may cause us some burning sensation and endeavor the friend of a demon may distress us in various ways. We do not mind. But the most regrettable 
factor is that all of them remind us of Krishna. And this is giving us too much distress. This is an instance of the feverish condition which is due to being separated from Krishna. Some of the devotees who went to see Krishna at Dwarka and, and were detained at the door said, My dear Krishna, O friend of the Pandus, as a swan loves to dive into the water among the lily flowers and would die if taken from the water, so we wish only to be with you. Our limbs are shrinking and fading because you have been taken away from us. The king of Bahula, although very comfortably situated in his palace, began to think the nights very long and distressing because of his separation from Krishna. King Yudhishthir once said, Krishna, the chariot driver of Arjuna, is the only relative of mine within the three worlds. Therefore, my mind is becoming maddened day and night with separation from his lotus feet, and I do not know how to situate myself or where I shall go to attain any steadiness of mind. This is another example of lack of sleep. Some of the cowherd friends of Krishna said, Dear Krishna, O enemy of the Mura demon, just think of your personal servant Praktak. Simply because he saw a peacock feather, he is now closing his eyes and is no longer attentive to pasturing the cows. Rather, he has left them in a faraway pasture and has not even bothered to use his stick to control them. This is an instance of metal, mental imbalance due to separation from Krishna. When Lord Krishna went to the capital of King Yudhishthir, Uddhav was so afflicted by the fire of separation from Sri Krishna that the perspiration from his inflamed body and the tears from his eyes poured from him and in this way he became completely stunned. When Sri Krishna left the city of Dwarka to seek out the Shamantak Jul and he was late returning home, Uddhav became so afflicted that the symptoms of disease became manifest on his body. Actually, due to his excessive ecstatic love for Krishna, Uddhav became known and in Dwarka as crazy. To his great fortune on that day, Uddhav's reputation as a crazy fellow was firmly established. Uddhav's craziness was practically proved when he went to Rayavataka Hill to minutely observe the congested black clouds in his disturbed condition. He began to pray to these clouds and he expressed his jubilation by bowing down before them. Uddhav informed Krishna, my dear leader of the Yadu dynasty, your servants in Vrindavan cannot sleep at night thinking of you. So now they are all lying down on the bank of the Yamunas, most almost paralyzed. And it appears that they are almost dead because their breathing is very slow. This is an instance of becoming unconscious due to separation from Krishna. Krishna was once informed, you are the life and soul of all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. So because you have left Vrindavan, all the servitors of a lotus feet, they are, they, are, they are suffering. It is as if the lakes filled with lotus flowers have dried up from the scorching heat of the separation from you. In the example given here, inhabitants of Vrindavan are compared to lakes filled with lotus flowers. And because of the scorching heat of separation from Krishna, the lakes along with the lotus flowers of their lives are being burnt up and the swans in the lakes who are compared to the vitality of the inhabitants of Vrindavan are no longer desiring to live there. In other words, because of the scorching heat, the swans are leaving the lakes. This metaphor is used to describe the conditions of the devotees separated from Krishna. Chapter 39, Ways of Meeting Krishna When Krishna and his devotees meet, the meeting is technically called yoga or linking up with the Lord. Such meetings between Krishna and his devotees can be divided into three classes, namely perfection, satisfaction and steadiness. When the devotee meets with Krishna in great eagerness, that state of meeting is called perfection. In the Krishna Karnamrita, Virva Mangal Thakur describes how Krishna meets his devotee with peacock feather on his head, with markat jewels on his chest and with his ever enchanting smile, his restless eyes and his very delicate body. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 38th chapter, Verse 34, Shukadev Goswami tells King Parikshit, My dear King, as soon as Akrur, the chariot driver, saw Lord Krishna and his elder brother Balram in Vrindavan, he immediately got down from the chariot and being greatly afflicted by affection for the transcendental Lord, fell down upon his lotus feet to offer respectful obeisances. These are some of the instances of perfectional meetings with Krishna. When a devotee meets Krishna after long separation, the meeting is one of satisfaction. In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 11th chapter verse 10, it is stated that when Lord Krishna returned to his capital Dwarka, 
the inhabitants said, Dear Lord, if you remain in foreign countries for so long, we shall certainly be bereft of seeing your smiling face. Upon observing your face, we, your eternal servitors, become greatly satisfied. All the anxieties of our existence are immediately mitigated. If we cannot see you because you are long absent from Dwarka, then it will be impossible for us to live any more. This is an instance of satisfaction in meeting Krishna after long separation. Krishna's personal servant Daruk, seeing Krishna at the door of Dwarka, forgot to offer him respects with folded hands. When a devotee is ultimately situated in association with Krishna, his position is called steadiness in devotional service. This steady position in devotional service is explained in the book known as Hamsadut. It is described that how a crude who was considered by the gopis to be terror personified would talk with Krishna about the activities of the Kuru dynasty. A similar steady position was held by Uddhav, the disciple of Brihaspati, who would always massage the lotus feet of Krishna while kneeling down on the ground before him. When a devotee is engaged in the service of the Lord, he is said to have reached the attainment of yoga. The English equivalent of the word yoga is linking up. So actually linking up with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead begins when the devotee renders service unto him. Devotees situated in the transcendental rasa or servitorship render their particular service whenever there is an opportunity. Sometimes they sit down in front of Krishna to receive orders. Some persons are reluctant to accept this level of devotional service as actual bhakti yoga. In some of the Puranas, also this servitorship in devotional service to Krishna is not accepted as the actual bhakti yoga system. But Srimad Bhagavatam has clearly indicated that the servitorship, servitor relationship with Krishna is the actual beginning of yoga realization. In the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd chapter, verse 32, it is stated that when devotees are engaged in the discharge of bhakti yoga, sometimes they cry from thinking of Krishna, sometimes they laugh, sometimes they become jubilant, and sometimes they talk in very uncommon ways. Sometimes they dance, sometimes they sing, sometimes they are actually engaged in the service of the Lord, and sometimes they sit down silently as if absorbed in trance. Similarly, in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 7, verse 34, Prahlad Maharaj says to his friends, My dear friends, as soon as pure devotees of Lord Krishna hear of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, who is the eternal reservoir of pastimes, or hear about his transcendental qualities, they become overpowered with jubilation. Ecstatic symptoms are manifested in their bodies. They shed tears, talk falteringly, glorify the Lord in a loud voice, and chant and dance in ecstasy. These ecstasies are always there, but sometimes they overcome all limits and the symptoms become manifest to all. In the process of surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are six items. To accept everything favorable for devotional service, to reject everything unfavorable for devotional service, to believe that Krishna will always give protection, to identify oneself with Krishna's devotees, Always to feel inability without the help of Krishna and always to think oneself inferior to Krishna, even though one may have full capacity to perform something on his own. When one is substantially convinced that he is always protected by Krishna in all circumstances, that feeling is called reverential devotion. Reverential devotion is executed in relation with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and with his other protected devotees. When Krishna was residing in Dwarka, some of the elderly members of the Yadudinist family would occasionally put some important matter before him. At su such a time, Krishna would carefully give attention to those matters. And if there were some humorous topics mentioned, Krishna would immediately respond with a smiling face. Sometimes when Krishna was executing his duties in the assembly known as Sudharma, he would ask the elderly members for good advice. By such advice, activities he is manifest as a supreme spiritual master, the supreme executive head, the supreme intelligence and the supreme power, protector and maintainer. Chapter 40. Reverential Devotions of Sons and Other Subordinates True reverential devotion is exhibited by persons who think themselves subordinate to Krishna and by persons who think themselves sons of Krishna. The best examples of this subordination are Sharan, Gada, and Subhadra. They were all members of the Yadu dynasty and they always used to think themselves protected by Krishna. Similarly, Krishna's sons such as Pradyumna, Charugdeshna and Samba felt the same way. Krishna had many sons in Dwarka. 
he begot ten sons by each of his sixteen thousand one hundred and eight queens. And all of these sons, headed by Pradyumna, Charadeshna, and Samba, used to think themselves always protected by Krishna. When Krishna's son dined with them, he would sometimes open their mouths for Krishna to feed them. Sometimes when Krishna would pat one of his sons, the son would sit, sit on Krishna's lap and while Krishna was blessing the son's head by smelling it, the others would shed tears, thinking how many pious activities he must have performed in his previous life. Out of Krishna's many sons, Pradyumna, the son of Krishna's chief queen, Rukmini, is considered the leader. Pradyumna's body features resemble exactly Krishna's exactly. Pure devotees of Krishna glorify Pradyumna because he is so fortunate like father, like son. There is a description in the Hari Vamsa, Vamsa of Pradyumna's activities when he kidnapped Prabhavati. Pradyumna addressed Prabhavati at that time and said, My dear Prabhavati, just look at the head of our family, Sri Krishna. He is Vishnu himself, the supreme driver of Garuda. And he is our su supreme master. But because we have become so proud and confident of his protecting us, we sometimes do not even care about fighting with Tripurari, Lord Shiva. There are two kinds of devotees engaged in devotional service with awe and veneration, the Lord's subordinates and his sons. The servitors in the abode of Dwarka always worship Krishna as the most respectable and revered personality of Godhead. They are captivated by Krishna because of his super excellent opulences. The members who always thought themselves protected by Krishna could readily convert their conviction into practical demonstration. Because it was sometimes found that the sons of Krishna acted very unlawfully in various places but were nonetheless given full protection by Krishna and Balram. Even Balram, the elder brother of Krishna, sometimes unknowingly offered respect to him. Once when Krishna came before Lord Balram, Krishna was anxious to offer his respects to his elder brother. But at that time, Balram's club was lowered down upon Krishna's lotus feet. In other words, the club in Balram's hand offered its own respects to Krishna. These feelings of subordination, as explained above, are sometimes manifested as anubhav. When demigods from the heavenly planets came to Sri Krishna, all of Krishna's sons followed him, followed them, and Lord Brahma sprinkled water from his kamandalu upon them. When the demigods came before Krishna, the sons, instead of sitting on golden chairs, sat down on the floor, which was covered with tear skin. Sometimes the behavior of Krishna's sons appears similar to the behavior of his personal servants. For example, the sons used to offer their obeisances. They were silent, submissive and gentle, and they were always ready to carry out Krishna's orders, even at the risk of life. When present before Krishna, they bowed down on the ground. They were very silently, silent and steady, and they used to restrain coughing and laughing before the Lord. Also, they never discussed Krishna's pastimes and conjugal love. In other words, de devotees who are engaged in reverential devotional service should not discuss the conjugal love affairs of Krishna. No one should claim his eternal relationship with Krishna unless he is liberated. In the conditioned state of life, the devotees have to execute the prescribed duties as recommended in the codes of devotional service. When one in mature devotional service and is a realized soul, he can know his own eternal relationship with Krishna. One should not artificially try to establish some relationship. In the premature stage, it is sometimes found that a lusty conditioned person will artificially try to establish some relationship with Krishna in conjugal love. The result of this is that one becomes Prakrit Sahajya or one who takes everything very cheaply. Although such persons may be very anxious to establish a relationship with Krishna in conjugal love, their conditioned life in the material world is still most abominable. A person who has actually established his relationship with Krishna can no longer act on the material plane and his personal character cannot be criticized. When Cupid came on one occasion to visit Lord Krishna, some devotee addressed him thus, My dear Cupid, because you have been so fortunate as to have placed your eyesight on the lotus feet of Krishna, the drops of perspiration on your body have become frozen and they resemble Kantaki flowers, a kind of small flower found in thorny bushes. These are the signs of ecstasy and veneration for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the princes of the Yadu dynasty heard the vibration of Krishna's Panchajanya conch shell, the hairs on their bodies immediately stood up in ecstatic jubilation. It seemed at that time 
that all the hairs on the bodies of the princes were dancing in ecstasy. In addition to jubilation, there are sometimes symptoms of disappointment. Pradyumna once addressed Samba with these words. My dear Samba, you are such a glorified personality. I have seen that once when you were playing on the ground, your body became covered with dust. Yet our father, Lord Krishna, still took up took you up on his lap. But I am un so unfortunate that I have never get such love from our father. This statement is an example of disappointment in love. To regard Krishna as one superior is called reverential feelings and when in addition to this devotee feels that Krishna is his protector, his transcendental love for Krishna is increased and his combined feelings are called reverential devotion. When this steady, steady reverential devotion increases further, it is called love of Godhead in reverential devotion. Attraction and affection are two prominent symptoms of this stage in this reverential devotional attitude. Pradyumna never talked to his father in a loud voice. In fact, he never so much uh, as unlocked the lips of his mouth, nor did he ever show his face filled with tears. He would always glance only at the lotus feet of his father. There is another example of steady and fixed love for Krishna in the instance of Arjun's informing him of the death of Arjun's son. Abhimanyu, who was also the nephew of Krishna. Abhimanyu was the son of Subhadra, Krishna's younger sister, he was killed in the battle of Kurukshetra by the combined efforts of all the commanders in King Duryodhan's army, namely Karna, Ashwatthama, Jaidrath, Bhishma, Kripachare and Dronachare. In order to assure Krishna that there was no change of love on Subhadra's part, Arjun informed him, Although Abhimanyu was killed almost in your presence, Subhadra's love for you is not agitated at all, nor has it even slightly changed his its original color. The affection for that Krishna has his, for his devotees was expressed by him when he asked Pradyumna not to feel so bashful before him. He addressed Pradyumna thus, My dear boy, just give up your feeling of inferiority and do not hang your neck. Just talk with me in a clear voice and do not shed tears. You may look straight at me and you may place your hands on my body without any hesitation. There is no need of exhibiting so much reverence before your father. Pradyuma's attachment for Krishna was always exhibited by his action. Whenever he was ordered by his father to execute something, he would immediately execute the order, taking the task as nectarian even though it may have been poison. Similarly, whenever he, he would find something to be disapproved of by his father, he would immediately reject it as poison, even though it may have been nectarian. Pradyumna's attachment and anxiety for Krishna was expressed when he said to his wife Rati, The enemy Sam Shambhara is already killed. Now I am very anxious to see my father who is my spiritual master and who always carries the conch shell known as Panchanya. Pradyumna felt great separation from Krishna when he was absent from Dwarka at the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he said, Since my father has left Dwarka, I do not take much pleasure in practice fight, practicing fighting, nor am I interested in any kind of sporting pastimes. And that need is there to speak of these things. I do not even wish to stay at Dwarka at the absence of my father. When Pradyumna came back home after killing Shambhara Sura, he saw his father Krishna before him. He at once became so overjoyed that he himself could not understand his joy on that occasion. This is an instance of success in separation. A similar satisfaction was observed when Krishna returned from the battlefield of Kurukshetra to his home at Dwarka. All of his sons were so overjoyed that out of ecstasy they repeatedly made many mistakes. These mistakes were the sign of complete satisfaction. Every day Pradyumna looked over Krishna's lotus feet with tears in his eyes. These signs of reverential devotion on the part of Pradyumna may be described in the same way they have been described in the cases of other devotees. So next time we'll continue from chapter 41, Fraternal Devotion. Thank you for joining. Hare Krishna.